Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. I am your host, Ryan Rampersad, and today I will be joined by Ian Arbuck, who has had Pixel phones, and we will be discussing the Pixel 4a. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO103. Hey, Ian. Hey, Ryan. How's it going? It's going all right. I am really excited for this uh, this review because like, I'm always on the lookout for mid-range priced phones for my family to buy. Um, and uh, the Pixel line, I mean, I've been I've been hanging out in like the more flagship priced, you know, Pixel phones. I had the Pixel 2 and the Pixel 3, um, but you've actually been using the, the Pixel 4a for what, like a week or two now? About About two weeks now. Yeah. You know, it is interesting, uh, the, the pixel history between the two of us and then, of course, the ironic nexus history between the two of us and even the broader network. You know, we've been doing this since the, the pixel four days. I mean, the nexus four days, like I don't even know what they're called anymore because <laughs> they're all kind of the same, but they're different. So the nexus four kind of set all of this into motion for us. Uh, but there were pixels. I mean, nexuses before that. And. Like that, that was uh, the Nexus 4 was one of the best phones that anybody ever had. And uh, of course, the Nexus 5, which we'll talk about later in our review here. But like, wow, what a what an amazing uh, journey this has been of all of the uh, increasingly high, high, high prices. And now suddenly something reasonable. Yeah, it's, I, I didn't really think about it until just now, but like you kind of jumped from the, the Nexus line over to... Uh, getting Samsungs pretty pretty consistently right when the Pixel line became a thing, right? Yeah, so I bought the first gen Pixel the, that was the Pixel One, and you know at the time I spent just around nine hundred and sixty dollars after tax, and I found that to be pretty close to crazy. Uh, <laughs> and now think about when that was. So I think that was two thousand seventeen, possibly either sixteen or seventeen. We can look it up and post. That's not going to happen, by the way. And and so when you think about that, a thousand dollar phone in those times, you know, three years ago, that was still fairly unusual. Like that was not normal, uh, you know, especially for a phone that wasn't specced or, you know, con- built to order very heavily. Um, I think I got the higher storage tier on that. That, you know, it was a fine phone. It didn't have really any um, interesting features other than being a pixel. And so it, maybe it had a slightly better camera on average than others. But it certainly didn't have unique screen tech. It certainly didn't have unique really anything. Uh, so the next year, I bought the uh, the Samsung S8. And um, by the, by the way, confirming 2016 was the Pixel. Ah, uh, real time follow up, perfect. Uh, from our own co-host. Interesting. Um, you know the the S8 phone from Samsung. Like what a what a what a better value. It had a unique design. It had, um obviously better year over year internals it had things in the os that were different enough to be interesting and it almost didn't matter because you put your launcher on it and it stopped mattering um yeah just just a better value at the time for you know roughly the same price so like why not try it and then you just kept doing that year over year because you just flip those phones back to samsung and you you get half off or mm-hmm. so well enough about um that let's uh let's prepare for the next 1.23 hours approximately and um <laughs> talk about the pixel 4a you ready i i'm so ready okay well let's begin this journey with the pricing okay ian how much did this cost so this uh <laughs> i mean you've got so many different options to choose from it's uh it's 350 dollars for the base price mm-hmm. and that's it that's the oh, only option. There. That that's it. There's only one SKU. <laughs> yep. Yep. Whoa. So not not even like not only did they decide okay, we're going to have only one screen size, only one storage space option. They also decided there's only going to be one color option. So, yeah. And of course, that it, color was just black with a cool little accent color on the power button, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah, so, you know, it's interesting that there's only one SKU, but the the whole the whole thing, you know, is sort of suspicious there. Were there supposed to be other SKUs? Maybe, but maybe they decided, oh, let's um, let's not do that because COVID hit and we didn't actually manufacture any of these because everything got delayed. Who knows? Now, it, does anybody mind that there's only one SKU? Well, the SKU that they have is pretty good, so I, I feel like it's fine in this case. 
Yeah, and and I definitely like I can appreciate it as a kind of public facing like cost saving measure as well, you know? Um like like I understand that Google is going to have to do certain things in order to keep this phone lower price than, you know, a lot of its comp- the competitors. Um and having one SKU is like, I mean, I'm totally fine with that if what I get in exchange is a slightly cheaper phone. Yeah, I totally agree. So at 350, I mean, I feel like that's a pretty good fair price, especially when you're getting all of the hardware that's in it within reason. I mean, you're not going to be getting, a, you know, an iPhone 12. You're not going to be getting, you know, a, a Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. You're getting a mid-range device for that price, but it's g- a good mid-range. Yeah, and I think it's really, really encouraging to see good phones coming out at this mid-range price again, because, like, for the last few years, I've I've kind of been at a loss for, like, what phone to recommend to people who don't really care about having, like, the latest and greatest flagship phone, you know? Yep. What do I do? Do I, do I recommend them... Uh, a one or two year old flagship device i mean that's not really feasible in the android space because then you're not going to have uh updates you know after what one year maybe maybe you even buy a a device that isn't even supported anymore like that's that's not really a good option in my mind um so yeah having having these mid-tier devices coming out uh and you know is is great um i also i mean even for my parents who like their budget they can they can barely uh imagine spending more than two hundred dollars on a phone like I'm still kind of looking around for like what's what's the good stuff there, but you know nobody likes talking about two hundred dollar phones anymore. It's also a little hard to to talk about the two hundred dollar phones because you get into this sort of wishy washy territory of well, it's not that great, so like save up some more and get something that is better and so when you look at the moto line, the moto G line, they do have some options around that $200 range, but something better er than is just $50 away. And, you know, then there's something better er er after that as well. And eventually you crawl back up to the 350 mark. And here we are today. Yeah. Um, And, you know, I totally would love to review some of those Moto G phones. Uh, our actually, our good friend Matthew Petchel actually did buy a Moto G g stylus i don't know what number that is it's one of the recent ones so maybe either a seven or an eight and he he finds that it performs very well and it actually outperformed his uh pixel four. Oh, so wait that's that's intriguing hmm. yeah but you know i think one of the things that's interesting here you know when we look back at the past um uh and you know what we always say here on the show ian uh what's old is new again you look back at the nexus five and that's actually the same price that the Nexus 5 was originally sold at 350. Yeah, which is what, you know, one of the major things that made it such a popular device. Yep. So, so. W- when I think about this, I think it's it's probably won't, won't be as popular because there are some drawbacks. Um and we'll talk about that here in a little bit, but it's pretty close to that. Let's talk about the display. Um and and kind of like the bo- the body and the shape all at once because they're all kind of related. Yeah. Like at this point in time displays equal body uh for the most part today kind of yeah yeah <laughs> um wow it is tiny i i see it's funny you say that because like i look at all of the numbers associated with this phone size and i think that's a really reasonably sized phone <laughs> well i i agree now it's reasonably sized coming from you know somebody who's been using reasonably sized phones for quite some time now, where I, I I also have here in my other hand, of course, the Note 20 Ultra, which is monstrous in comparison, <laughs> uh, like a 6.9 inch or 6.49 inch phone versus a 4. Four, or 5.67 inch phone. That is a inch and a bit difference. That's enough to notice it physically to hold. But, you know, coming from the S20 Ultra, my previous mainline phone. The the biggest difference for me is the weight. Uh, it's so light you can actually just hold it. Um, it's not you know it's it's something you can just you can fully you know wrap your hand around it. It's just incredible. Like I haven't done this with a phone in years. Yeah, I can definitely. I 
I can definitely tell you that it would feel right at home in my hands because, like, you know, I had the Nexus 5 and then the 5X, the Pixel 2 and the Pixel 3. You know, I never got, like, the XL sizes of any of those. Um, and the body size uh, it, for the Pixel 4a is is practically the same uh, as the Pixel 3. And even in terms of weight, they're they're pretty comparable as well. There's just they're just a few grams off from each other. And what's really cool is the body size that we have listed here in our show notes. It is really for the most part the entire screen. So what you see there is what you're really getting with that screen size. And that's just so it's it feels so modern, uh, you know, compared to some of the older Pixel devices that had the chins or foreheads or notches even. So what a what a nice design that somehow Google figured out how to make this one time. And can you imagine <laughs> what'll happen if they don't do this for their following phones? Like this design is perfect. It'd be really weird. Oh, yeah. it would be. It'd be very Google though. When we look across, you know, phone ecosystem here, the, the comparable iPhone is maybe the iPhone 7, which is SE2 size. Um they're all kind of the same category, iPhone 8, um SE2, iPhone 7, they're all kind of the same. It's that size. But without the massive chin and forehead above and below the screen. Right, exactly. So it it still feels more modern to, to a person than, um, you know, if, if you had to buy an iPhone SE today, which have those. And it's always interesting to think that Apple didn't just put a notch on one of those and just get rid of all that junk at the bottom. But, you know, there's always the next five years. Um, let's see. Special display features. Uh, you know, it's all it's a Pixel phone. It has um, you know, ambient display. It um doesn't have a built-in fingerprint reader uh, reader on the display, so that's good. It has one on the back, so it actually works. Um, <laughs> you know, there's no notch. There's no there's no weirdness. It's just it just works fine. There's a little uh front-facing camera in the corner. Um, little, little hole punch. Yep, hole punch looks fine. You know, it gets out of your way pretty, pretty much all the time. It is kind of interesting that they uh, do have the software bump out the time in that in that left hand side. You know, pretty far away from it. So, you know, at one time I thought, why is the time way over there? What is that thing? Oh, it's the camera. It is so weird seeing like screenshots from other people's phones nowadays because everybody's like the mm -hmm. you know that top notification bar is just like all over the place. <laughs> so. How's the battery on this thing? You know, it's really interesting. The battery is fine-ish. So I've, uh, you know, it's hard to say for sure because I'm not doing my normal workday out, out of the house. But if this is the new normal workday, then it's great. So let's see. <laughs> it's it's about 6 p.m. as we record this today, Ian. And I woke up about 7 a.m. today. And so I'm just hitting 69%. Oh, wow. Uh, That's really good. Yeah, it's great. And uh, my my phone usage, of course, is different than it used to be in 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 the house. And uh, also, in in amusingly, that is with some significant Google Maps usage, uh, forty two minutes of Google Maps. So that's unusual. Usually, Google Maps just kills your phone. So that's that's it's doing real well in that. On the other hand, it does have kind of a small battery, and so it's not microscopic like the old days, but it's not you know, a whopping 5,000 battery size. So, you know, it's fine. I think it's, it's good enough. If you're, if you're going to do a lot uh, of, you know, movie watching or video watching, or uh, y I don't know if you ever use a Google duo call, but if you do that, <laughs> it will just kill your battery. But that's just what that app does. Now, once you do need to charge it, um, we've got just one option. We've got the USB Type C port down there on the bottom. Uh, there's no wireless charging. And I, you know, I it, it's funny because I never used to care, but it does seem like something that needs to kind of trickle down into lower end devices. So it's not really a higher end specific thing. Um, it it uh, certainly helps. Uh, people who have these lower devices, especially as these devices where the uh, charging ports become loose or, you know, ineffective entirely, having that yeah, secondary sure. option can really be helpful. And it's also just nice to be able to, you know, kind of reduce the wear and tear on the whole phone in general. Uh, but yeah, nothing, nothing special in the Type C category. You know, it does have an interesting port though, Ian. I believe it's called, um, I think it's called a, like a headphone. That What is it called, Ian? 
a three and a half millimeter headphone jack. Yeah, I think it has one of those. It's right on top. It's weird. Nice. I do. I love the note that you wrote here in in our show doc. I had to reach over and pick it up to recall if it did have a headphone jack. It does. And I even said while well, while writing this, oh wow, it does. <laughs> yeah, I sure did do that. It it's <laughs> funny because you know you buy these thousand dollar phones and they don't have headphone jacks and you know they don't because everybody whines and moans and complains. But then you buy this three hundred and fifty dollar phone and nobody even mentions it in any review. As much as I complained about it when I got my first phone that didn't have a headphone jack, like I really don't miss it anymore. Yeah. Um, but like having to use a headphone jack comes up super infrequently for me. Um, you know, when I like riding my bike, it's better for me to not have wired headphones. So like yep. I would be using Bluetooth anyway. Uh, and yeah, it's it's I do I do feel like they should put the headphone jack at the bottom of the phone if they are going to put one on there because like when you, you put just it slide in your pocket, it in yeah yeah exactly yep um, yeah the the other reason i like that it has a headphone jack is when i think about giving this to somebody who's less technical than i am my mom has never successfully paired bluetooth with anything so i can't it, it wouldn't be reliable to force that on to somebody i think so having that uh headphone jack option is is good for for normal people yeah and i suppose asking asking you know your mom to like have an adapter with her at all times never gonna happen unreasonable (laughs) right so what would happen in that situation is uh you know we would buy the adapter and i would basically tie it to the headphones that she uses uh and i would have to buy multiple adapters because one won't be enough because she'll have headphones in this room and headphones in that other room and so, you know, it'll just be adapters tied to other things and it'll yep. just be a mess. So one for the aux cord in your in the car and yada yada. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Uh, you know, speaking of sound though, you know, it is interesting. This this little little phone, it actually kinda actually does have a, a size deficiency because it's so tiny, they did not have front facing speakers on both the top and bottom, like, you know, other Pixel phones may have had in the past. Yeah, and I think that's that's um fine. So, I have I have the Pixel 3 and like that was they 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 started with the, with the display on the Pixel 3, they started pushing towards, you know, this edge to edge display, but they didn't quite take it all the way. It still has like a slight chin and forehead. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure that the main reason they did that was because they wanted to have these like proper dual front facing speakers on the pixel three which is definitely something that i value a lot like they sound great um and looking at at pictures of like the speakers on the pixel 4a which are dual uh, speakers there's there's one up in the earpiece and then one down at the bottom of the phone but the one at the bottom of the phone is like a downward facing speaker yep. instead of front facing uh which which like makes me really nervous yeah, you, so if you hold your phone up and you're just holding it against you to balance it, you'll cover that bottom speaker. Or if you have, um, you know, if you have your phone in your hand, like maybe, like maybe one of your fingers could cover that speaker down there somehow. But you know, realistically, I don't think that's a big deal. I think the bigger deal is just the speakers are so tiny anyway. It's just a little tinny. It's not very mm-hmm. filling. And I don't know if it had been front facing, it wouldn't really made a big difference if it had still used the same kind of speaker. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't know anything about like what decisions they made for the internals. Um, but like I've I have been consistently impressed with how loud and full the the sounds that come out of my Pixel 3 speakers get. Um you know, I, you can um, even like you can feel the whole handset like vibrating. Yeah from the speakers (laughs) now this can do that too but you know at that high that max volume level it it, it kind of sounds terrible so don't do that um but on the other hand you know this can totally survive just fine you know if you're if you're uh sitting in a heavy fan room or you're uh, driving along and you don't pair it with your car or you know use your aux port you'll still be able to hear things it just will be a little quieter and or a little tinny but otherwise it's fine uh, let's talk about the buttons, Ian. Um, it sounds like there's not much to talk about here, honestly. <laughs> there's there's a mint green power button. Yeah, that is kind of exciting. So, like, this this is kind of a hallmark of, like, the Pixel line is every year they seem to have at least one of the color options on every model. 
has like the the power button is like a complementary color to the rest of the phone. Yeah. And every single year, the color options that are, that have that cool power button, it's never the color option that I want. <laughs> no, uh, you know, and imagine, um, you know, imagine a, a different future where Google had actually not resold Motorola like twice somehow, and they oh, actually sure. still had Moto Maker. Imagine this little cute phone, and you could actually customize it somehow. So like you could customize the back the back plate, you could customize the front rim, and you could customize the power button and volume rockers, you know, with whatever color sets they had. And you know, wouldn't that be fun? Like you could have a nice, you know, black and red and blue Nexus style phone. That could be fun. Would be fun. Probably not. There probably wouldn't be an option on the one phone that has one SKU. No, but... there would be a billion <laughs> SKUs in that situation. But yeah, so. That's 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 fine. Uh, let's see. You know, the other button, of course, it has is this uh, volume rocker, and that's fine. But, you know, the both buttons are on the same side of the phone, and that's really weird to me still. Yeah, I don't know why everybody started doing that. But, like, it's been ages since I've seen an Android phone ship that has, like, the, the volume buttons over on the left-hand side. Yeah, I, I, I haven't noticed it lately either, and I, I, I guess I'm used to it now, but it's still weird. Uh, you know, yeah, this is one of those phones that doesn't have a uh, fingerprint sensor in the screen. That's a nor does it have me. like you know Face ID style, which is thing. also good because that never worked in the uh, <laughs> Pixel Four. That was awful. Um, but you know, it has this fingerprint sensor in the back, and it's refreshing of how reliable and perfectly useful it always is. It's funny how that works, right? Can you confirm for me one of my favorite? features of the the fingerprint sensor on the back is being able to like swipe down on it and get your notifications to come down you know i i bet that exists but i probably either didn't turn it on or turned it off yeah it's in the settings under like gestures or something like that i will never find it while we're talking about it so let's just go with possibly (laughs) it does say swipe fingerprint for notifications and if Perfect. you do it it works so yes uh setting search you heard it here first it works okay ian this is the moment of truth where you have to talk about the camera excellent it's fine okay <laughs> <laughs> i you know how is it right i mean you know compared to all of these other phones that i use like the pictures look fine um you know the the big the big uh, camera kerfuffle of the last phone season was the Galaxy uh, S twenty Ultra uh, because it had this really soft focus because it had this crazy megapixel lens and mm. uh, you know camera sensor. This has just a regular camera, one regular camera. It looks like there's two on the back because they put the flash in the opposing corner, uh, and it's kind of one module encased in glass. Uh, it takes fine, just just totally fine and adequate pictures. It takes pictures like a Pixel. Um, my mom has a Pixel 3a. It takes pictures just like that. They're fine. They're perfectly fine. Yeah, my understanding is that it's using the exact same hardware, the same sensor that they've been using for all of the Pixel phones since the Pixel 2. And, you know, of course, like they ship the same software for for processing all of those photos with all of their phones so uh in theory you should be getting like the same quality photos in the pixel 4a as you would be getting in you know the flagship pixel 3 or pixel 4 or whatever um so that's and and like that is i think really the difference between buying a mid-range phone now in 2020 versus buying a mid-range phone back in 2012 13 whenever it was that the that the nexus 5 came out right because like one of the sacrifices that we made by choosing to buy the nexus 5 was you're gonna get mediocre pictures right and i you know at the time i don't know if i even would have said the nexus 5 was mediocre there was uh you know i I don't even know what year that was now but that was a little such a long time ago that. I definitely I definitely noticed that like taking pictures in low light sucked. Yeah, but don't hardcore. you think every phone probably had that same issue? Like even with an iPhone what 5 maybe, wouldn't it also suck there too? 
You know, I can't really, I can't really tell you because the Nexus Five was my very first phone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, I, I don't know either. Uh, the Nexus Five was my second phone, really. Uh, that's not definitely not true. That's but let's not pretend. true. <laughs> let's pretend for the sake of argument. Um, yeah, you know the the pictures are fine. It works great in the dark. Um, you know, I took some pictures of the the park a few nights ago, and I was just doing some, you know, just playing around with it. If you take a picture with regular mode and, you know, it's really dark, you're going to see nothing. But it is pretty impressive how, how night night sight, uh, you know, the night picture taking mode, it yeah. somehow by magic brightens everything up. Do the pictures look really weird? And does it look like there's a spotlight randomly in the middle of the forest? Yeah, but it's cool. Uh, you know, one thing I noticed, though, is when you're taking even regular pictures, especially if you're in the house or just in not what I would call low light, but maybe it thinks it's low light sometimes. Uh, it will just chug on processing for a long time. And it's usually it usually says HDR processing. So it's doing that specific extra mode. Uh, but yeah, it, it just feels like it takes a long time sometimes. Yeah, HDR. So a few years ago, they they made the switch to like, okay, HDR plus is going to be on by default for every single picture that you take, not just the ones where it's like, where where it really really matters. Um, and that that's something that I remember from the Pixel Three A was, uh, you know, everybody talking about, oh yeah, processing for these photos takes a lot longer for this mid range hardware to do rather than you know for the for the full flagship ones that have that specific like pixel core or whatever they they called that you know yeah um and and yeah now i'm 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 having flashbacks to my days with like my my nexus 5x where if if the camera app like got killed by android you know because it was taking too much memory uh while it was still trying to process a photo i would just straight up lose that photo no and that that's crazy yeah yeah and that and that happened a few times god bless those my motorcycles um <laughs> uh and and that happened to me a few times because like you know when, when i'm taking pictures uh quite often i'm i'm also like recording on strava and i've got google maps navigation going and i'm like playing some music or a podcast or whatever and then i you know try to go and take a photo and the and the phone's just like i have two gigabytes of ram what i can't can't do it <laughs> something's something's gotta go <laughs> yeah no that 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 would be an, an inexcusable trade-off today so it's good that that phone or this phone the 4a does not do that now well, I, I, I mean, <laughs> I haven't used your phone, Ryan. I like, I feel like your picture taking doesn't put it through the same paces as my picture taking does. Um, so I, I have plenty of apps running at the same time. Don't worry. All right, fair. Yeah, they're they're all there. Uh, I have four chat apps constantly going. I think this does segue us nicely into the into the specs, though. Yeah, it does. Like, let's talk about that processor from the Snapdragon. What number? Snapdragon, are we using here? Uh, 730G, and you're gonna have to explain to me what the heck that means. Yeah, it it's pretty pretty crazy. Now remember the good old days of the S4 Pro. No. Okay. Well, that was uh, <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair, very fair. The S4 Pro was the processor in the Pixel. I mean Nexus 4. It's very hard to keep these straight. The Nexus 4 had the S4 Pro. Uh, yeah, maybe that's right. Okay, so then, Sam or uh, then Qualcomm thought, no, this this the lineup of S4 Pro is too confusing because now there's a bunch of them. So now let's rename the lineups to these 800 and 600 and 400 numbers. So there was going to be three lines, and so 600 was going to be kind of the mid range, 400 was going to be very budget, and then. 800 was going to be flagship premium. Mm -hmm. And of course, the Nexus 5 had an 800. It had the 800, the first 800. 800, as in 800. Uh, then, you know, many, many years continued, and suddenly Apple had the best chips out there, and Qualcomm had slight, slightly too much worse chips. 
and the 800 line had its ups and downs. The 810, uh, A20, A21, that was sort of a rough time for Qualcomm. Lots of heat, lots of uh, power usage. Uh, you know, in during that all, that whole time, of course, there was the 3G, 4G transition. Uh, so 4G kind of killed battery life there, and you know, Qualcomm, of course, bundled the the modems with that in some cases, and in other cases they didn't. And so eventually the 600 line, which was uh, one time the mid-range, transitioned to this new 700 line. And the promise we were all told and all sold was, oh, well, you see a 700 chip? Well, imagine that, but as an 800, but with the 600 power efficiency. Okay, okay. so imagine a 730 being equivalent to an 830, but with the efficiency of a 630. That was what they tried to sell it as well here we are and i think it kind of is that but it's more it's more like a 600 all the way around <laughs> okay uh and the g is supposed to mean better graphics sure uh it's not a powerhouse and you can just tell it is nowhere near as smooth as one of these flagship samsung phones that i also have nearby it's nowhere near as smooth as an iphone even something like an iPhone 7. An iPhone 7 still totally just beats it in terms of fluidity. Um, you know, like that gesture that you use to send a, an app to the home screen? Like, just to go home, right? So, like, do you just swipe yeah. up in the bottom of the phone? Uh -huh. Well, the, 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 the gesture to do that, you can just see dropped frames on occasion all the mm. time. Um, and this is a 60 hertz display, correct? I believe so. And you yeah. can you can just you can just feel that there's a little bit of hesitation, um, you know, things that open instantly uh, have spinners in in this phone, and so that could be a combination of, you know, hitting the disc or something else. But it seems most likely related to the processor. It's not the best processor. Like that's just that it just has to be a fact, and then it it's fine. Will a normal person notice or care? That's the real question. Right. I I would like to have some more hands-on time with a uh, a modern Motorola G Moto G phone because I don't know if um somebody would notice there. My mom uses the um Pixel 3a and what chip did that have like a 650 something? So she never complains about it. So maybe it's fine. Are you so your other phones that you've experienced like the the samsung notes and you know s8 mm -hmm. and whatever um have those any of those touched on like having high refresh rate screens or have you have you been pretty consistently using 60 hertz displays well that is a good question you ask so the s20 ultra has a 120 hertz screen and okay, it's just yeah. locked to 1080 always on and the note 20 ultra has an adaptive uh, 120 uh, when it needs it and 60 when it doesn't. So I am spoiled by that. Because I, I hear that that makes, yeah, that makes a big difference in your perception of like how fast a phone is, is yeah uh, performing. Yeah. Yep, for sure. And I have even on previous Samsung devices turned the animation speed to be faster. Not sure if that means the multiple is lower or bigger or not. Mm -hmm. Um. So, you know, it, it it you just notice that it isn't as fast though. And so whether yeah. that's the screen or the processor, and I think I still think it's the processor due to due to all of those loading uh spinners that I see all the time. Well, I mean it's fine for normal people, I think, but that just means that this phone won't be a five year phone. Might not even be a three year phone. Because it's if it's already this slow today and it's on like the border of noticing well, like it's going to be no more noticeable in the future. And of course, right. this doesn't launch with whatever new Android features come out later this year because it came out now instead of later. So, uh, yeah, you know, so it's it's a uh, hit or miss. And so I think it's, you know, laggy enough for me to notice now. And so maybe the 765 that will come out with the Pixel 5 later this year will be better. But it's kind of a shame that this didn't get something better as well. Now. I am 
uh pretty encouraged by the fact that it has six gigabytes of ram which is like perfect you know, the, number oh yeah the 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 pixel line for years now like every single year that they come out with a flagship uh phone you know you look at it and you go why how how can you justify keeping your your flagship phones at like four gigabytes of ram and charge me nine hundred dollars for this well um, the justification was not a good one but the idea was the uh, the google was trying to pretend to 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 be pretending to be apple right uh, you know optimizing when you have and integrating the hardware with the software pretending because it never was true yeah uh, no I there's mean... <laughs> only so much you can do when half the apps you use have nothing to do with google and the google apps really do not follow any principles or guidelines <laughs> so yeah but yeah this like six gigabytes of ram feels like an appropriate amount of ram for the mid-range price point in 2020 yeah i don't think i have experienced i'm just paging through all the apps of course here that i have on my phone uh i don't think i experience like you know out of memory reloads very frequently um the apps that i do feel it more in are probably like the chat apps which are well known to balloon in size relative to how many you know things you have signed into slack or how many discords you have <laughs> so that kind of makes sense though um but when I open things like Twitter or, you know, Twitter or, or Hacker News, like those are fine. Those, those load pretty quick. So, um, yeah, usually uh, the memory is fine. It doesn't seem to be running out too frequently. The, the tuning is good on this one. That's good. Uh, it is funny, though, when, you, when we look back at the Nexus 5, like we talked about earlier, well, the Nexus 5, when that came out at the same price, it only had two gigs of RAM. So what, a, what an improvement. Uh, you know, the other important thing that a phone needs to have is good storage. And that's because anytime you have to hit the disk, you're going to be hitting that storage. And so the Pixel 3a from last year had EMMC storage, which is much slower than regular good storage. It's like the old school solid state memory. And so now this is using uh, UFS storage. And it's actually using what I think is an appropriate amount for today's ecosystem size. And that's 128 gig. Yeah. What do you think, I what do you think even, about that? I, so given that this is at the mid-range price, I would have even been satisfied with 64 gigabytes, I think. Um, but I'm definitely not complaining about having 128. Yeah. So my mom has had her um, Pixel 3a since uh, launch day last year. Uh, and... She actually, uh, two weeks ago, just hit uh, almost out of storage morning messages for the first time ever uh, because, you know, she'd taken enough pictures and downloaded enough apps or whatever to actually run out of space, basically. And so she was at uh, 60 out of 64, or some number close to that. So that's amazing. I know. And, and I had to hit the free up space button, which did something magical inside and more space was here. So it is really nice that Google somehow figured out how to include some more storage in here of a good type. Um, and it, it really is just so important because if you're taking pictures or you're getting updates from the store or you're playing games, anytime you do something that isn't already in RAM, you're hitting that disk and having reliable disk speed is crucial. Yeah, yeah. I think I think having the the fast read and write speeds is more crucial than having 128 gigs versus 64. I think I think having a phone at this price point lasts for more than two years. Having that extra storage is really helpful, too. Uh, yeah. What is funny, though, is I do notice for some reason, I don't know if it's the the audible app in general. That's just crazy. Whenever I hit play it, it, it um, no other phone does this for me. It will do a spinner whenever I hit play as if it's like, how do I find where to play on the disc? That's not <laughs> what storage is supposed to do now. It's supposed to be instant. Stop that. Uh, okay, Ian, well, let's talk about the software, because I haven't used the stock Android phone in a while. <laughs> Welcome back. Yeah, it's weird. Um, yeah, it's not actually that weird in retrospect, because I put Action Launcher on all of my phones. Same. And I changed Action Launcher to be different enough from the default Action Launcher settings now, because... You know, our, our good friend, the developer of Action Launcher, 
uh, Chris, you know, he has over time decided to make it feel pixely, but I do not agree with those changes and have not over time. So I set it to be kind of the way it used to be uh, and then kind of just suit my preferences now. So, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. You know, it feels like every other phone I use at this point. Yeah, I, I guess like I wouldn't be using Action Launcher if I didn't want it to be radically different from, you know, the stock launcher. So I'm which right is funny, though, because the the way it comes out of the box is that it's very much like the Pixel Launcher, just with a couple of extras. Oh, I just figured it out. I just figured it out. He's marketing it towards people who are using like the Samsung yeah. phones, the LG phones that have like, you know, that people who aren't satisfied with what those launchers look like and they want to have a pixel launcher <laughs> which is funny i get it because i do that too but for in a different way yeah yeah yeah, yeah there's great. something in the middle there um so you know i change enough of it and so it you know it's really hard to talk about the software on these phones these days because you don't really care the launcher is i don't know like a tenth of your experience with the phone because normally you're in the nine other apps you use but it's something you can change now and has been for many years. You know, in the old days when people used to complain about TouchWiz, they would always see, look at the, you know, like that uh, grid of icons. You you can see when you pull down the, the tray, the notification tray. Well, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. They all look kind of the same now. Like, I don't know. It's fine. Yeah, and and if we if you want to hear more substantive, you know, discussions of like Android, the operating system, you know, version ten that we're on currently, um, I reviewed that last fall, so we'll put a, a link to that review in the show notes. Um, and of course, Android eleven is going to be coming this fall pretty soon here. So, uh, if you if you're interested in hearing about that in the future, uh, subscribe to this show. Yeah, and, and you know what? I will even put it on this Pixel phone that will get it presumably on day one. Wink, wink, Google. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we can we can uh, give it a, give it a try. So, you know, updates. Hey, you know what? You know what, Ian? This phone will get updates. That's really weird. Huh. I never thought that's about amazing. that. That's weird. I don't for, know. For three whole years. Oh, that's just insane. Yeah, okay. Uh, The software is fine. As I said earlier, the stuff lags a little bit. Things load for a little bit longer. But, you know, it's fine. Software is fine. It's it's a phone. They do that. Uh, You want to talk about some issues real quick? Sure. So in my week-long test, it's... Wait, are we talking about, like, um, your issues or issues with the phone? The issues with the phone. Okay. Yeah, my personal issues are out of the bounds of even this episode. It's... I think I need a whole network to work those out. Um, <laughs> so during my week long test, which turned into two weeks because I'm too lazy to swap Sims again. A um, couple weird things. And um, one of those things is I had to uh, go on a, a, a wee bit of a drive on a very long detour to get to the airport earlier this this last two week sprint. And I had uh, an interesting issue. I lost GPS twice on that drive. Whoa. And uh, you and I, I don't know if you heard about this, but um, tinkering with your phone while you're driving is dangerous and don't do this. Uh, so I tried to figure out how to restart my phone without looking, and that was a real challenge. Uh, luckily, I had a break midway through, so I you know, was able to safely restart and relaunch maps. Um, sometimes, you know, it's possible that, you know, the internal GPS mechanism could just get stuck and have no way to reconnect. So a restart could help, but then it got lost again and it just failed to connect. And so that was kind of a bummer. And, you know, I haven't, I don't go on many drives these days because I'm pretty much just at home. So I don't know if that was a fluke. It didn't seem like on any other occasion that I've ever used this phone that it had a major GPS issue. Nobody's, um... I haven't seen this comment go off like other issues that Pixel phones have had in the past uh, on Reddit or anything. So it could yeah, have just and been that's a fluke. something that's something that you should be able to notice just by like opening up the Google Maps app and like, you know, t- like keeping an eye on your little blue dot to see if it like is moving around erroneously or if it has like a super huge circle around it saying like, I'm not it, sure where I am. It hasn't seemed to be that way. I use um 
you know, I use the location fe sharing feature with you all the time. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, am I at home? I think I am, but it's hard to tell from other people's perspectives because I have like eight phones here. So, <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's it's just a weird issue. And so I thought I would mention that the other weird issue and the one that's more annoying in actual like day to day working at home use is this crazy shadow uh, auto auto brightness issue. So here I am in the office and the light is in the middle of the room. And so my head blocks the light from the phone's perspective a little bit. Now, when it does that, and I'm just staring at my phone right now in the same position, I am always in at my desk. It will do this crazy thing where it will go up to, you know, good brightness. It'll be fine for 10, 20 seconds. And then it will think, oh, I don't need to be that bright anymore. And then it'll drop down to like min brightness, basically. And then it'll think, oh, it's not bright enough. Let's raise up the brightness again. And it'll just keep doing this over and over and over. And no matter what app I'm in, whether it's a dark screen or a bright screen, if I'm in this room with the overhead light on, it freaks out and it will oscillate between the two brightnesses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I I don't remember if it was Android 10 or Android 9 when they introduced this kind of new, this new version of the like auto brightness algorithm. Um, but I remember there were a lot of people who did not like the way that the that the new algorithm operates um so i'm wondering yeah i don't know how much of what you're experiencing there is like specific to the hardware of the pixel 4a cuz i i believe that the the uh brightness sensor is actually under the screen now yeah um, so that is actually a trend so with all of these new hole punch style phones that are coming out uh they all have their little brightness sensors and proximity sensors and, you know, most of all the sensors under the screen. And what the phones do is they toggle real quick on and off the pixels above them. And so, I, you know, I still wonder if, um, like, maybe they're not toggling off enough of the pixels in fear of somebody actually noticing that quick toggle. Uh, and that causes it to freak out. Yeah, so that that's a possibility, or it might just be that like you know you're experiencing the the stock Android uh, brightness algorithm for the first time, and it's you know it's way different than what you're used to on the Samsung phones. Well, um, it's it's way different <laughs> in the sense that it's unacceptable and it's basically broken. <laughs> now it's interesting too. So if I if I take this phone and I go outside, totally fine. Doesn't do this crazy weird thing. It's only here in this room in this particular lighting situation. So yeah, well, I mean, have you heard that like the sun is unbelievably, insanely bright? I, you know, I haven't heard that because I've been in my house for the past seven months. <laughs> um, yeah, so those are really the only two issues. Um, and you know, if I had to rank these issues in terms of importance, neither would be very high. Final thoughts, Ian. Here we go. Uh, small, good value. I wish Google had done this from the start. Does that seem fair? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that the 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 Nexus line really shown back when it was yeah mid range prices with like flagship near flagship quality phones, and so seeing seeing Google return to that paradigm, you know, consistently. This is the second year that we've gotten a mid range Pixel phone from them. Um, I think that this is really like. Like the 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 flagship pixels have been quite good, um, with the exception probably of the Pixel Four. Uh, but you know the the like I th I feel like they can really make a name for themselves and differentiate themselves from the competition, uh, in this mid range market. Yeah, one hundred percent. Uh, you know this is the new you know this is the the twenties version of the Nexus Five, right? Uh, you know, people will be looking at this cute little phone here for the next three years saying, wow, that's that's a good phone. If only they had done that for the past 10 years. Uh, <laughs> no, you know, we'll see later this year in, I don't know, October time frame. You know, if the Nexus, I mean, the wow, see, I can't do it. I can't do it, Ian. If the Pixel 5 will actually be, you know, noticeably better for the double the price, basically. So if you think of this as being 350, almost definitely certain that the uh pixel 5 i did it right this time will be about 700 dollars. maybe they could maybe we could be surprised and it could be 699 
for sure that uh will it be worth that extra price will it be extra will it be will it be worth double basically uh you know it, i think it'll be a hard 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 hill to climb for them yeah so let's think about that here for a minute what what uh, what could you offer at that same price ratio right i think that's an interesting thing to think about well it's hard to imagine uh samsung ever you know delivering something like that because uh, the whole samsung line right now is cursed to high price points for no reason uh surely the s series shouldn't have been starting at a thousand dollars and then climbing from you know 9.99 all the way up to what 15.99 last season that was insane and the note line is no nothing to even get me started on right now we'll, we'll get a review for you later on that in the month yeah, I think the I think the only thing that they're really justifying for their price is the folding phones that they're doing because, you know, that is like novel enough, new enough technology that it's like, oh yeah, that makes sense to cost a, a pretty penny. And 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 so that phone uh for for the listeners who uh don't uh like to fold their money and put them into a large burning pit is uh $2000. Yeah, I'm not saying that I would spend all that money on that phone, <laughs> but <laughs> oh, like so it's reasonable. That's, that's the one that I can I can actually understand why it costs that much. Yeah, right. So it's it's uh, that's a that's a big big one. So Samsung is cursed right now. So let's not go there. Okay, but how about Apple? So like the SE two, you know, if you if you're already in the iOS ecosystem, then don't get this. Get get an SE two because you like that size, and and, and surely the you know, iPhone 8 internals will survive another few years and you won't even notice the difference. Um, and, you know, that seems fine. OK, maybe or if you don't like um, the iPhone S SE line for whatever reason, then maybe consider like a Moto G like we talked about earlier. And maybe those are even better for your particular use case, because maybe you don't like how small this phone is. Maybe you're not like Ian and you actually have giant hands and uh, eyes they can't see and so you need that tablet sized phone um okay well the moto g phones are for you then right okay well let's continue on um maybe we don't need to imagine too far ian maybe it is an iphone 11 that we're actually trying to compare um you know that non-pro iphone model your number um because it's a an incredible processor that'll last for years well that's not going to happen because we know that the iphone or the the pixel 5 We'll have a 765, so that's not going to happen. So we can cross that one off. <laughs> um, we know it's probably going to have either six or eight gigs of RAM, but it doesn't matter because you know the Android optimization is can only go so far, whereas the iPhone optimization is just so much better for whatever reason. Um, you know, it'll probably have less storage because Apple does want you to you know upsell the you know the SKU numbers, um, probably. But the cameras are really good on the Pixel phone, so maybe you're going to buy that better pixel instead of this better iphone uh because the camera could somehow be way better than this one yeah that's i mean thinking about the fact that they've that they've been using the same camera hardware for all of the pixel phones up uh, to date like and and have just been riding on the fact that like they can make the software processing better and better and better um it it seems to me that like the logical step for the for the Pixel Five to make it like be an, an outstanding like camera option would be to put a new sensor in there and also take advantage of you know that history of of software development that they've been doing. And that makes sense. Have have we have we gotten any leaks about like what the Pixel Five is going to have in there? Well, Ian, uh, I have bad news for you. Oh. Um. According to the leaks that I've read so far, and of course, you know, leaks are leaks, so they might not be true, but the leaks that we've seen so far, they say that 765, 6 or 8 gigs, and a Pixel 2 sensor. Hmm. How is that? What, what what am I buying here? I don't know. Maybe I just bought this again. So maybe the Pixel 5 is you buy two of these. Um, yeah, isn't that, isn't it weird? Um, so where is that phone, Google? Where is the... Where is the value in the phone that has doubled this price? What do you do from here to make it better, but also not pay the Qualcomm tax for a real chip? I don't know the answer yet. Maybe we'll find out. Uh, maybe next year, the the year of the um, 5A and the Pixel 
six. Like the naming conventions have are out of whack now too. Uh, maybe next year all of this will make sense because maybe uh, Google will have switched to their own chips or Qualcomm won't be a monopoly anymore. You know, maybe there's a lot of things we can hope for in 2021. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know, I think. Um, I think this is great. You know, this phone is good for a variety of people. Um, you know, I think you asked like, what, what do you, what do we, how do we feel about only one SKU existing? I think it's fine for a mid range, uh, option. Uh, you know, in, a, in, in a, just a few weeks, we're going to be getting an, a kind of more, two more SKUs in a way. If you think about it, we're going to be getting a 5g model that is physically larger and we'll also be getting this double priced, um, pixel five option that will do something somehow better than this somehow. So maybe those are the other SKUs. You cannot possibly call the Pixel 5 another SKU of the Pixel 4a. That's, Why not? That's absurd. <laughs> Why? Why not? It, it is an unknown marginal difference in betterness. Why isn't it just another <laughs> SKU? It's the F Pixel 4aa then. All right, Ryan. I think I think I think you need to go to bed. Okay, okay. Um so so to so to end, to end all of that up uh you know we started this episode by talking about the Nexus 5. The Nexus 5 was sort of this perfect phone when it came out because it had a great shape, it had a great sensor, it had a great processor, had good enough RAM, somehow at 2 gigs, and it was just yeah. good. This is also just good. Just like it's just black. <laughs> okay, um hey Ian, do you want do you want to close out the show here? Sure. Uh, so thank you for listening to this episode of Second Opinion. Uh, Ryan, where can people find you on the internet? Hey, well, you know, you can find me just about everywhere with all of my phones, uh, but especially on my website, ryanrampersad.com, and of course on Twitter at RyanMR. And you can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck. Second Opinion is released under a Creative Commons attribution license, so feel free to use any or all of this episode as you see fit, as long as you link back to the original page, which, once again, is thenexus.tv slash SO103. If you would like to discuss this episode with other listeners, you can do so on our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash thenexustv. And if you are willing and able to support us financially as we continue to make technology-focused podcasts, you can do so on our Patreon at patreon.com slash TV. You know, I've got two notes for you listeners. Uh, go to the Reddit and chat with me about this phone. I have it here in my hand. I don't have to give it back to anybody because I physically bought it myself. It's mine. So just chat with me. Talk, ask me all the questions you have. Uh, and then for all of you, uh, the Samsungs and Googles and Apples out there, just send me phones and I'll just talk about them. That's fun. Until next time, have a good one. Have a good one. The Nexus. The Nexus. The Nexus TV. Podcasts from, from the, the Technological, technological Convergence. convergence.